Bill Maher once again stepped into another liberal taboo, fearless and spot on. He was right on the money. On his show, Real Time with Bill Maher, he asked the question of why liberal celebrities never want to talk about black-on-black inner-city crime, specifically the rate at which black people murder other black people. There is a reason for this, and that reason is why no one else will talk about it, because they fear ramifications from talking about it. That's why. And we're going to talk about it. Let's get into it. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. So Bill Maher posed the question to economist Glenn Lurie and podcast host of The Glenn Show. Lurie is a black American. Bill said to Lurie, like Chicago, like most of the shootings are young black men killing other young black men. Is that not correct? And Lurie responded saying, yeah, that's correct. Give it a listen like Chicago, like most of the, the shootings are young black men killing other young black men. Is that not correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. okay, so folks, it's always been correct, but people don't want to talk about it because people don't like to be called racist if you talk about it. And if you point out any failings in black life and black culture or black people, it's now considered being racist, even if you're trying to help. I've been talking about this problem of black-on-black murder, and I can't tell you the number of stories I've written about black murders inside Chicago. You know, former President Barack Obama claimed that Chicago was his hometown, so he should be out giving speeches upon speeches about this, but you never hear from him. I'm sure that he gave some obscure 30-second soundbite where he talks about it, but I'm saying, instead of saying something... Like, Chicago alone can't solve the gun problem. Reducing gun violence is a generational project. And all the other BS that politicians on the Democrat side say, where they talk about gun reform. It's not the guns that are murdering people in Chicago. It's people using guns who are murdering people. Look, if you take away the guns from these people, they're not going to overnight become honest people. They're not going to become nice people. Okay, they're still going to murder. And could he just for once try to talk to the people in these neighborhoods, people in Chicago, and say, look, stop killing each other. Look what you're doing. Let's continue. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Much more than, than what the cops do. Why doesn't anybody talk about that? Well, I mean, uh... Do you see what Mar is trying to get at here? Okay. He goes on to say that young black males are killing young black males, okay, much more than the cops do. So what he's trying to do is to to point out that we constantly hear about black people being killed by police. And police, in many cases, like, the dead people don't deserve to be dead, right? Now, I'm a back-to-blue guy all the time, but if a police officer does something wrong and it's due to racial animus, and it's not like he made a mistake because he thought his life was in jeopardy, because we can work that out. I mean, when you make a mistake that caused somebody else their life, it needs to be worked out in court. It needs to go through the legal justice system. But Marr was talking about how we hear the talk of police killing young black men involved in crime, and we never hear the same people complaining about the fact that there are far more young black men, women, even little children, sometimes babies caught in the crossfire. They're being killed by other young black men in places like Chicago, Detroit, parts of Los Angeles, and elsewhere. And I think if people want this killing of young black men to stop, then the black community has to stop making it taboo for people to talk about it. Why aren't there, uh, you know, a a, a hundred giant black celebrities who would have the respect of those people saying, what are you doing to yourselves? Why are you killing each other? You know, I don't think white people in places like Chicago can solve this problem. I think only black people can solve this problem in the black community. That's not me being racist. That's me being pragmatic. People in the hood are not going to listen to white people tell them to stop killing each other. And I know that there are plenty of people in the black community who are trying to help the senseless slaughter of so many people to end. But 
it just seems that there is an element of race hustlers out there who are making buck. They're making bank off this. The complaints, they get those donations. And some of them are in the media because they love to stir the unrest, pushing stories for clicks and views and ratings of police killing unarmed black men to the point where I would say a large majority of black Americans believe that police are hunting them down across America. And according to the stats, it's simply not true. But there are far more young black men being killed by other young black men. And it's time we started talking about it. Why are you killing each other? This I mean, is I no way to live. This dishonors our community. Listen. Come on. Uh, we're better than this. Right. I feel like it's never addressed. It's and what I would uh, want to observe is that any structural move that you want to make requires a majority of the people to get behind it requires democratic politics to get behind it. And in order to get a majority of the voters in Chicago or any place else to get behind anything that's going to cost them money, they have to feel safe. They have to feel that the people who are in charge are on their side. They're not. And that's why Mayor-elect Brandon Johnson needs to come and give speeches in which he says this is contemptible behavior. We won't tolerate it in our city. The reason we have cops is precisely in order to stop this from happening. And if you do it on, our, on my watch, you're going to go to jail. But you know what, folks? That's never going to happen. Because from what I'm hearing, the guy they just elected to replace Lightfoot is worse than Lightfoot and that people are going to die because of policies he wants to put forward. Um, he needs to but, say that in order to get the white taxpayers in the city not to move out of the city and to get behind whatever structural program a clever man like Danny. I can't agree with this guy more. Comes up with. But I mean, there's a website that I mention all the time. It's called heyjackass.com. Now, the people behind this website have been around for a very long time, and they keep as accurate stats as they can on shootings and homicides inside Chicago. And when you go there, you are faced with reality of what's going on inside the city of Chicago, and it breaks your heart. On the site, besides the stats of how many people were shot and killed per month, per week, year to date, with a lot of other stats, it hit me like a brick when I saw one of them where it says a person is shot every so many minutes and a person is murdered every so many minutes. As of right now, as I'm saying this, the website says a person in Chicago is shot every three minutes and 40 seconds. And a person in Chicago is murdered every 15 minutes and 54 seconds. Now let that hit home for a minute. Close to every 16 minutes, someone is murdered in the city of Chicago. A little over three and a half minutes, a person is shot in Chicago, according to the stats that they have. It reminds me of how during the summer of love, when former President Donald Trump offered Mayor Lori Lightfoot federal aid, he was going to send agents in to get the homicide rates under control. And trust me, folks, they would have ended it with a quickness. They're very good at that. And if you remember, instead of engaging the president and having a dialogue about getting help, Lurie Lightfoot made it a racial issue for Trump, as if his offering help was racist in nature. And she said that she would take him to court if he sent federal agents in to stop the senseless slaughters in her city. So it shows she doesn't give a damn. I think the politicians don't care about these people. They only care about the money people. The white people, the rich blacks, the rich Hispanic, they don't care about people in these neighborhoods who are dying. Lurie Lightfoot was elected mayor of Chicago, and part of her job was to protect the citizens of her city from harm. She, like all the other mayors in the past, have failed. They failed because Chicago is still a city of murder mayhem. Now, all the flowery language and all the kooky ideas of defunding the police and shifting police funds over to social workers who will go on the streets and talk to people who are shooting up other, it's a bunch of wasteful nonsense. You need to unleash your police on your neighborhoods and you need to back them up when they get into it with criminals who are going around shooting people. When you argue that all police are bad and that you shouldn't trust the police to handle this problem, you're exacerbating the problem. There's no other way to look at it. And the people that are running Chicago need to do this with a quickness because like Mr. Lurie said, 
you're going to get people who pay the majority of taxes. They're going to start moving out. We did a story of a billionaire who moved his company down south because he in Florida, he just couldn't take the murder anymore. He said that his employees were afraid to go to work because in their neighborhood, there was just so many shootings going on. So they better do this with the quickness or Chicago is going to be in a hell of a lot more trouble than it already is. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for spending time with us. If you want to help this channel, visit rpwmedia.com, read all of our stories and share them with like-minded people. We'll see you in the next one. Every day I'm looking for a way to 